From the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater, starring Bob Hope and Joan Caulfield in Monsieur Beaucaire. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Some years ago, one of America's most distinguished authors, Booth Tarkington, penned a moving and dramatic novel called Monsieur Beaucaire, the story of a humble but heroic figure struggling against the inequalities of royalty. Hollywood cast Beaucaire with Rudolph Valentino, the great lover of the silent screen. Tonight, we take our cue from Paramount Studios and their version of Monsieur Beaucaire and cast it, as they did, with Bob Hope. And when you do a thing like that, you take whatever comes and like it. And I'm sure you will. Co-starred with the gifted and beautiful Joan Caulfield, also from the screencast, Bob appears as the love-smitten barber, Beaucaire, who does everything, but uh, it's time for our first act, starring Bob Hope as Monsieur Beaucaire, and Joan Caulfield as his girlfriend, Mimi. Paris, 1774. An era of lovely ladies and fearless gallant men. In King Louis' lavish court are gathered the finest swordsmen in Europe. But in all the palace, there's none whose blade is as sharp and bright as Monsieur Beaucaire. Next. Who's next, please? Shave today, sir? Shave? How's the razor's edge? Yeah, I'm going to try and catch it tonight. What was that, sir? Oh, I'm glad you like it. It's that new lather I'm using. Got irium. Uh, one moment, sir, while I... Sh- one moment, sir, while I shave around your ear. Ow! Well, you can always hear with the other one. <laughs> By the way, have you heard the latest about the king and Madame Pompadour? Well, it seems that Madame Pompadour... No, our hero is not a duke. Not even a count. He's the palace barber, Homer Beaucaire. Homer's not particularly bright, but he's drummed up a nice little trade there in the palace basement. Shaves, wigs powdered... And tickets on the Irish sweepstakes. But while Beaucaire applies his razor, upstairs in the king's chambers, matters of great importance are being discussed. At last, sire, at last, the perfect plan to avoid war with Spain. It's about time you came up with an idea. As prime minister... It's not my idea, sire. It comes direct by courier from King Philip of Spain. Well, what is it? An alliance, sire, based upon a marriage between Maria, Princess of Spain, and a French nobleman of your choosing. Excellent. But who, Garmon? What nobleman? He must be handsome, of course. Dashing, clever. Someone whose wit and charm would... But, of course... The Duke de Chandler. Oh, brilliant, sire, brilliant. Uh, we rid our palace of his fiery temper and quick blade to say nothing of uh, considerable romantic competition. Uh, the young blood should be duly grateful, eh, Don? Oh. <laughs> Not to mention a few of the older ones, sire. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> wonder. What do you mean? Oh, nothing, nothing. Except I've observed how attractive he seems to Madame Pompadour. Madame Pompadour means nothing to me, nothing. Oh, have no concern, sire. What if she does favor the Chandra? He'll be off to Spain in a few days. Two days? He leaves for Spain tonight. Inform the Chandra at once. The Queen, too. This is a big night, and the court must celebrate. Good heavens, if we're going to have a celebration, I must dress. Get my barber. Get him here at once. At once, Excellency. Summon Monsieur Bouquet. Monsieur Bouquet, the King's barber. Come in. Oh, it's you. Homer Bouquet, haven't I told you... Hello, Mimi. Why are you still alive? I thought you told me you were going to kill yourself. You think I'm afraid, don't you? Well, you're gazing on a Frenchman who's not afraid to die for love. Wait here. I'll get you a piece of rope. That's not the kind of necking I want. <laughs> Look, Mimi, you can't do this. Why couldn't you be satisfied just being a scullery maid? Why did you have to promote yourself upstairs? Do you know what that means? I know exactly what it means. Chambermaid to the king. What's so wrong if I want to enlarge my scope? Your scope's large enough. And the rest of you doesn't need any improvement. Oh, what's worrying you, Homer? The king. And I won't let you do it. Besides, what makes you think the king will look at you twice? As if I didn't know. He won't have to. Once will be enough. Yeah, but he won't be king forever. Comes the revolution and we'll all eat a giant hamburgers with double rich malt. 
<laughs> I'm only a little barber now, but someday I'll have a big up-to-date barber shop with Life magazine, sun lamps, and a direct wire to Santa Anita. <laughs> Turning me down for a king. I'm a famous barber. I'll show you my clippings. Oh, go shop in your way. Yeah, and another thing. What about those other women upstairs? Madame Pompadour's and those others. They'll see through your tricky schemes. In this palace, it's every woman for herself. Dog eat dog. Let's leave the queen out of this. Where is that little girl? The guard's calling you. Besides, I've got to prepare the queen's bubble bath. And who knows? While the queen is taking her bath, I may even get to meet the king. That's a fine thing, flirting with a king behind the queen's bubbles. <laughs> I'm warning you, Mimi, if you go through with this, you'll never see me again. Have you ever thought about that? Well? 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 I guess you've thought about it. Okay. Get your razor and brush and go upstairs. Sorry, I gotta hang myself tonight. In fact, I'll be all tied up. The king wants a shave. Oh, well, that's different. The king's neck comes before mine. But don't worry. I'll kill myself tomorrow. It'll be better then. Tomorrow's Monday, and I'll be able to hang with a wash. You just wait and see me, and you'll be sorry. <laughs> Kill you clumsy idiot. Oh, sorry, Your Majesty. Did I do something? Do something? That brush full of lava right in my mouth. I wondered where it was all going. <laughs> it's nerves, sire. I'm just a bundle of nerves tonight. It's Mimi. Mimi? Who's Mimi? Oh, she's your new girl. I mean, uh, she's my girl. <laughs> that is, she's our girl. <laughs> Gets around, doesn't she? What on earth are you gibbering about? Uh, Mimi, may I talk to you about her, sire? Certainly not. Here's the queen. Louis? Really? What's this I hear about the Sean going to Spain? Well, why not? Royal blood, best swordsman in the land, and from what I understand, he's very attractive to the ladies, eh, Barbara? Oh, well, I'd be too if I used eyelash cream every night. Shut up, you idiot. He didn't say anything. I said shut up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Your Majesty. I was only repeating what Mimi told me. Once and for all, who's Mimi? My girl, sire. She dreams of position, power. Why, she'd like to influence the king like Madame Pompadour. And who says Madame Pompadour influences the king? Oh, everybody knows that. It's all... Louis, over... I shall talk to you later. Uh, my dear, please, you don't understand. I said later and alone. Oh, tell you blundering nincompoop. If I so much as see you again, I'll have your head. Yes, sire. Two heads are better than one. Thank you, sire. Now hurry up and powder my wig. I'll announce the news to the court myself. Deshaun leaves for Spain tonight. Hmm. Who does he think he is? After all, I'm not dirt. I'm a man. Well, sort of. What makes him so special anyway? Anyone can be king. I could be king. All I have to do is slip his ring on, wear his wig, and put on his robes. Hmm. I think I'll look in the mirror. Booker, you jabbering idiot. I'll have your head. Well, he can have my head, but it won't look good on him either. Say, if I were king, I wouldn't go around cutting off everybody's head and stealing everybody's girl. Well, I wouldn't go around cutting off everybody's head. Hey, look at these masks. Well, with a hiss kisser, he needs masks. Got a mask for day and a mask for night. This must be his night mask. It's got neon eyebrows. Guess I'll slip it on. Uh, do don't shoot. I was just trying on the... Oh, oh, pardon me, Your Majesty. Mimi, she thinks I'm the king. Oh, dear, dear. Approach me. Approach me. Thank you, sire. Rise, child, rise. Why, you're the little wench who's been going around with Beaucaire the Barber. Splendid chap, Beaucaire, and so handsome. Beaucaire? Handsome, sire? Just don't see how one man can get so handsome. Oh, believe me, sire, there's nothing between Beaucaire and me. Oh, charming fella. So witty, so clever. And I happen to know that you've shown more than a casual interest in him. <laughs> But Beaucaire is a man, sire. And I'm not interested in men. Mortal men. My interest, sire, is France. Yes. How's that again? Sire, I love France. And to me, you are France. Oh, it's just the way this robe fits. Of course, it's a little tight around Paris. Oh, what a moment. Do you know what a moment like this means to a woman? Right now, I'm studying from a man's point of view. Don't think of me as a woman, sire. Think of me as the people of France. I'd rather think of you as a woman. It's such a small room. Woof, woof, woof. That kiss, sire. That was for France. It was. Now let's have one for the colonies. Louis! Oh, the queen. Oh, your majesty, please don't misunderstand. I'm sure I shan't. I never do. Do I, Louis? I was just telling his majesty of my patriotism. Good. And I will see that you are amply rewarded. Dog! Me and my big fat masks. This is just not my day. Oh, 
was. Yes, Your Majesty. Majesty. It's thought it went to the Spanish border. Spain. Oh, but Your Majesty. Majesty. Put in France again, I'll have your head. Spain. Oh, no, no, Mimi. Did you say something, Louis, dear? Me? Say something? <laughs> Stay right where you are. I'll be back. Sean, darling, leaving for Spain tonight. Oh, this is awful. Well, it's no use, Pompadour. You heard the king's orders. You better leave my apartment. The king should find... Uh, the king. You. Your majesty. Why? I, I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, your grace, you've got to take me with you to Spain. Oh, it's not the king. It's only... Oh, here. What are you doing in the king's robe? Not very well. Look, please take me to Spain. i got to see a man about an olive. Out of the question. But Mimi's gone to Spain, so I've got to go, too. I'll be your lackey. I'll even be your lackey's lackey. Um, I'll... Where are you, oh. That voice. It's Louis, the king. Commodore, it's our heads if he finds us here together. I'll do your laces, your undies. I'll even mend the runs in your stockings. Um, where can I go? Where can I hide? I'll cut your hair. I'll shave you. I'll scratch your back. I'll scratch her back, too. I'll... Into the other room. Under the bed. Just hide. What happened? The sponsor show up? <laughs> As for you, Bocaire, out of those robes. Show them under the couch. And you will take me to Spain, won't you? Poor Mimi. It was all my fault. I'll I... get my razor and start shaving. Oh, here you are, Deshaun. If you're ready, we can... What? Shaving? You were just shaved a couple of hours ago. Oh, yes, sire. But when I got through, I made a mistake. I dusted his chin with Vigoro. You? I thought I told you to get out. Oh, I'm leaving. I'll be out of here before you can say Madame Pompadour. Madame Pompadour? What makes you think of her, Barbara? Yes, and what's this on the floor? A handkerchief? Hmm. Familiar scent, Deshaun. And the lace, so delicate. Could it belong to anyone we know? Why, I have no idea, sire. Oh, it's mine, Your Majesty. I always carry two, one for show and one for blow. Delight... <laughs> delightful scent, isn't it? I wouldn't give two cents for those other scents. Well, this comes all the way from France. This is France. Yes, yeah, small world. Deshaun, I believe Madame Pompadour's hiding in the support. Sire, to entertain such thought is madness. Nevertheless, I intend searching that I... The Queen. Oh, for heaven's sake. Uh, uh, yes, my dear. All right, Louis, start talking. Unless you intend to make more of a fool of me than you have already. What nonsense is this? Oh, it's nonsense for the Queen of France to come upon the King of France petting and kissing a little scullery maid. A chambermaid. Quite right, chambermaid. Furthermore, how did you know? I saw the picture. Hmm? Uh, I mean, I... Well, uh, you know how those things whip around the palace in one keyhole and out the other. What chambermaid? I haven't seen any chambermaid. Oh, then I suppose it was someone else in your room wearing your robe, your mask, and your ring. What ring? Your turquoise ring. The one that looks like... Why? That looks like that one that the barber's wearing. Oh, yeah, it does look like yours, doesn't it, sire? We must go to the same hot shop. Looks like mine? It is mine. So... Knew she wasn't a scullery maid, eh? Oh, mercy, your majesty, mercy. Why did you do it, knave? To save her, sire, Mimi. Save her? Save her from what? Uh, from you, sire. There, you see? You lying scoundrel. God, God. Yes, 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 yes. Please, this barber, take him to the guillotine. Oh, no, no. Cut off his head in the morning. Eh, too bad, Beaucaire. Won't be easy finding another barber like you. When you get to Spain, your grace, look up Mimi, huh? Tell Mimi I'm sorry. Mimi? Who's Mimi? Oh, the little girl who'd like to be like Madame Pompadour. Mimi! Chop off his head tonight! Oh, woe is me, and right when I bought myself a new bottle of wild root. Do you like your cell, Beaucaire? I could have you move to a larger one, but after all, in a few minutes, you'll be dead, so... Hey, hey, that, that noise, what's that? Oh, they're just testing the guillotine. Executioner's trying to correct his slice. What a way to die. What difference does it make? You said you wanted to die anyway. Yeah, but for love, for Mimi, and like a man, not like a salami. Courage. The guard comes for you now. Come on, Beaucaire. Say, can't we put this off for a while? I think I'm getting a sore throat. That'll be all, guard. You may leave. Yes, Your Grace. You, you shall. No, Monsieur René. You may leave also. Of course, Your Grace. Now, can't René watch? I sold him a ticket for this. Not a word, Beaucaire. If you don't want to die, do exactly as I say. Huh? We're changing clothes, you and I. Oh, I couldn't give you mine right after, right after I sewed in these swell new shoulders. I'd... Louis is sending me to Spain tonight. Popping me off, for all I know, on the ugliest woman in the world. The king of Spain's daughter. Well, I won't do it. Well, so you're going to let him chop off your head instead of mine? Oh, of course not, you idiot. We're both going to Spain. But you'll be the Duke de Chong, and I'll be your lackey. Uh -huh. Now stop asking questions and get into my clothes. <laughs> Oh, 
this is the Prime Minister, Bulkir. He's going to Spain with us. All right, driver, to the Spanish border. Mr. Sean, what on earth is this fool doing in your clothes? I demand to know the meaning of this masquerade. You'll discover that in good time, monsieur. <laughs> and so will you, Bulkir. <laughs> well, they don't have guillotines in Spain, do they, Barber? <laughs> No, just the rack and the steak. <laughs> yeah, the, the rack and the steak, huh? You mean they stretch out and barbecue you? That's right. And if I stay in France, I get the guillotine. That's right. Fine menu, steak or chops. Bob Hope and John Caulfield will return in a moment with Monsieur Bouquet. One of the great things about our way of government is that if one part starts getting too powerful or begins to use its power wrongly, another part can say, hold it, man. That's putting it bluntly, but it is an idea of one way Congress works. In the legislature, there are rules for procedure and rules to keep the rules from being abused, like the way the filibuster and cloture rules apply to Congress. The filibuster is the exercise of the privilege of unlimited debate. That means once he has the floor, a senator or representative may speak for as long as he cares to. If this occurs, others who wish to vote on the bill may invoke cloture, which ends all debate, so voting may begin. Cloture is possible with a two-thirds vote. It's like saying, we've heard enough talk, now let's see what the majority wants. Then democracy really begins to work. We return you now to William Keeley. Act two of Monsieur Beaucaire, starring Bob Hope in the title role and Joan Caulfield as Mimi. <laughs> Determined not to marry the Spanish princess, at least until he's seen what she's like, the Duke de Chandre has snatched our hero from the jaws of the guillotine dressed him in his own finery, and deposited him in a coach bound for Spain. Meanwhile, at the border, the treacherous Spanish general, Francisco, meets with his accomplices. So, gentlemen, the king of France has chosen the illustrious Duc de Chandra to marry our lovely Princess Maria. Uh, where is Maria? She has already left the convent in Switzerland, general. She travels incognito with her duena. By now, their coach is well across France. Mm -hmm. And what a disaster it would be were the princess to die on French soil. Uh, <laughs> I see what you mean. Where the French, you mean. The French uh, could be held responsible. And what answer but one could our stupid King Philip give? You mean war. Exactly. And in time of war, a man of courage might even seize the throne of Spain. General, Maria will never reach Spain. Good. I wonder where her coach might be right now. By nightfall, Maria should be in Bayonne. Bayonne, eh? Well, it shall be your purpose to see that she never reaches Bayonne. How tragic that one so young and lovely must die. Of all things to happen to us, Sir Sean, broken harness, six miles from Bayonne and our coach breaks down. Uh, how long before we can proceed, coachman? Soon, Excellency, I hope. Uh, and on top of it, this ridiculous masquerade. Deshaun, I insist that you get out of Bouquet's clothes immediately. Hey, hey, look down the road. There's a coach coming. I'll stop. Hey. How do you like that? They wouldn't even stop and help us. I guess I should have shown them a little more leg. Look here. Did you see what I saw inside the coach? Yeah, women, two of them. Well, what are we waiting for? I'll take the young one. Oh, what an angel, what a vision. I think the one with the mustache likes you. She may be a little old, but... Driver, unhitch one of our horses. Make it two while you're at it, driver. Dushandra, you're supposed to be a bridegroom en route to your marriage. Yes, to a woman I've never even seen. Yeah, for all he knows, she may be a big, fat, flabby, uh, 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 rather attractive type of woman. Oh, shut up. And I'll further remind you, Deshaun, that I am being held responsible for the success of the... Look, that coach is stopping down there. They're being attacked. Bandits, come back here. Use your head, man. We can afford no risk. Yeah, that's right. No risk. You speak of risk to the Duke Deshaun. But there are six of them. Yeah, six of them. Three for each of you. Hurry, fellas. Six or six hundred. What does it matter? Yeah, what does it matter? Well, go on, fool. Help his grace. Me? You're a man. You've got blood in your veins. Yeah, and I want to keep it there. It's the squirty kind. Oh, <laughs> 
Get in there and hold your end up. It's too big a target. <laughs> I said help him. Here, here, take my sword. Oh, well. Save one for me, the little one. You can have all the others. I'm not selfish. I'm God. Touche. Footy, footy. Oh. I'm coming, I'm coming. Touche on guard. Well, Duke, did we get them all? Uh, all but one. I'm sorry he got away. Come back and fight, you coward. That's too bad. He was the finest swordsman of the lot. Keep going, you coward. <laughs> Lucky for him, he got away when he did. You are quite safe now, ladies. Oh, how can we thank you? Oh, believe me, it was nothing at all. His grace is right. Nothing at all. My grace? My grace? Oh, my gracious. Yes, yes, yes. Well done, my good man. Well done. Remind me to reward you with a handsomely with a goat skin full of uh, goats or something. <laughs> Thank you, Your Grace. Oh, think nothing of it. Remember, we're living on barred head anyway. Well, I must run along now and sharpen my sword. You can never tell when we meet more of these cads. Don't be long, my good man. Oh, uh, Your Grace. Oh, you forget the Prime Minister. I'll go back and prime him. See you later. Mademoiselle, I fear your driver was killed by the bandits. Would you grant me the privilege of driving you to your destination? Oh, you're most kind. Maria! But, Dona Claire, we must get to Madrid. And this gentleman is being most considered. Obviously, the gentleman is a lackey. But if his master will permit... I think I might persuade him. I'll return at once, madam. I forbid it. I absolutely forbid it, Your Grace. Sorry, Darmon, but I'm driving the ladies. I'll meet you at the tavern at the Spanish border. But they'll have a welcoming party there to greet us. They'll expect to meet the Duc de Chandler. I said I'd be there. Yeah, we'll be there. Let's go, Your Grace. Not you. Selfish. Come back to Chandler. Stop him, Beaucaire. Stop him. I'm mad at him. Do you realize what this means? Supposing he arrives late at the border. Supposing he... He, uh... Hmm. Hmm. Well, what are you staring at me for? Hmm. Hey, what's going on behind that hmm? It uh, might work at that. What might work at what? Your grace? Oh, no, you don't. Not me. Oh, no, I just came along for the ride and to find Mimi. You must. Not me. I'm not going around impersonating any dukes. He fights duels. A fellow can get hacked up that way. But, Your Grace, surely you've heard what a prize he's considered among the ladies. Yeah, but you... Hey, that's right. Women. Hundreds of them throwing themselves at me. Pawn me, mauling me. Oh, no, you don't. You almost had me so sorry. You'll have to use the old duke. Very well, then. Well, now you're talking. I'll just have to send you back to Paris. Now you're talking. And the guillotine. Now you, you're talking to the new duke. It's true, General Francisco. That demon from the other coach slashed our men to ribbons. And the Princess Maria was permitted to continue on her way, eh? Well, it takes two to make a marriage, Carlos. The Duke de Chandra arrived here this afternoon. Uh, would it not be a most unhappy circumstance if his grace should meet with a fatal accident? Mm, it might not be easy. They say he's the finest swordsman in France. Oh, no. Hardly the finest if he is without a sword. And I think... It... Hey, Carlos, what is that disturbance down in the courtyard? Who's that girl with the guards down there? Girl? I'll open the window. Come along now. We have no passport. You cannot remain in Spain. Oh, please, I must say. If you send me back, it means my death. It's been ordered by the Queen herself. God! Yes, General? That girl. Send her to me at once. And you said your name is Mimi, my dear? Yes, General. Well, don't worry. You may remain in Spain. Oh, how can I thank you, General? You've been so kind and so understanding. Perhaps uh, you may be able to return the favor. Uh, when my men pay their respects to the Duc de Chambre at the reception tonight, uh, if his sword is unavailable... He's to be attacked, the Duke? Oh, my dear child, a simple abduction. Just to delay the wedding for a little while. But a delay might mean war. <laughs> what ugly thoughts for such a charming head. How much pleasanter if you dwelt on other things like uh, a reward. The Chateau in Barcelona, for instance. Oh, I, I understand, Your Excellency. I'll get his sword. Well... Judging from that crowd, the Duke has just crossed our border. Uh, open the window, my dear. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you lovely peasants, you. Control yourselves. I know it's hard, but try. Trusting peacock. Just look at him. I, I, I can't believe it. Do you realize who that is? Why, the Duke de Chandra, of course. And the French Prime Minister. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. yes, of course. Then what is it you can't believe, little Mimi? Oh, that I'm going to have a chateau. <laughs> Don't worry, my dear. I won't forget. Will you kindly hurry, Beaucaire? Finish shaving me. Say, why am I shaving you? I'm the one they're waiting for downstairs. 
Did you see all that femininity? Acres and acres of it. Boy, just like a sea of grass. Remind me to sharpen my lawnmower. They happen to be waiting to greet the Duke de Chant. Uh, why isn't he here? Hey, maybe that's him now. Uh, come in. His Excellency, the commanding general of the Spanish armies, Don Francisco Miguel Pedro Altamira de los Monteros de Consico, de la Torre de la Vega de los Parasitos de Castillo de los Rios, García González Rocanmaro de Andrade. Sounds like a California bus schedule. <laughs> Uh, just a moment, please. Now, he's the most powerful man in Spain. We've got to see him. Uh, tell His Excellency to come in, please. General Francisco. Uh, your Grace, we greet you in the name of Spain. Bow, oh, you fool. Bow. What a fantasy. Imagine him coaxing me to take bows. Uh, I trust. Uh, I trust your Grace had a pleasant trip. Oh, not bad, not bad. We had to get an interpreter to read the Burma shave signs to us, but it wasn't bad. Uh, <laughs> His grace is really most fatigued, General. Yeah, and I'm a little tired, too. Uh, I've taken the liberty of ordering dinner. Exciting dishes to tempt the palate. Oh, is he coming, too? Well, I really am not exactly hungry. Uh, uh, wines to stimulate the senses. I'm not thirsty. And after dinner, ah, something to please your grace's discerning eyes. Well, let's start with a dessert, huh? Uh, shall we go? <laughs> your chance, Mimi. Pretend you're one of the wine girls, and then arrange to meet a duke alone, as soon as possible. Oh, yes, General, but where? His rooms will be the best place. Get his sword away from him. My men will do the rest. Hurry now. A little more wine, Your Grace? Mimi! Mimi, what are you doing here? Shh. Let's go someplace where we can talk. Oh, make some excuse. I'll meet you in your rooms in five minutes. Mimi! You said something, Your Grace? Who, me? No, just testing the old pipes, General. Me, 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 me. Moo, 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 moo. Excuse me, folks. I forgot my thumbs. I'll be right back. Imagine meeting you here, Homer. Me, me. Gosh, it's good to see you. Gee, I, I thought you'd be angry with me. Angry? Whatever for? Well, you know, I, I kind of got you kicked out of France and everything. Oh, but you didn't mean to, did you? <laughs> Homer, what are you doing? Oh, just what they do on a rainy night in Rio. You got the cards? Oh, now, stop, Homer. Hey, and then tell me, uh, what are you doing in the Duke's clothes? Uh, stretching them. I'm just taking his place for a while. Nobody here knows what the Duke's looks like, so I'm just, well, you know the Duke. Cherchez la femme? Oh, thanks. Don't mind if I do. Oh. <laughs> so they chose you, above all others, to impersonate the irresistible Deshaun. Well, one just can't hide quality in breeding. Yeah, when you got it, you got it. Oh, you're so right. Your regal forehead. Runs in the family. The Habsburg chin. Got it from my mother. The bourbon nose. Got that from my father. Drank like a fish. <laughs> oh, Mimi, let's forget the past and settle down together right here in Spain. Oh, just the two of us alone in a sweet little cottage. Yes, Mimi, and perhaps in a year or so. There'll be a little whale in the nursery. Personally, I'd rather have children, but... Have a true way. Oh, Huh? Homer, I wish you'd take off that old sword. Why, sure, honey. You got a letter you want to open? <laughs> I'll take the sword, home. Oh, careful. It's pretty sharp. Good. Now stand where you are, you feather brain powder duster, before huh? I run you through. Oh, ouch. Mimi. I'll teach you to get people banished from France. Well, Mimi, I don't get it. No, don't worry. You will. All right, gentlemen. Come in. Oh, uh, what happened, uh, big bastard? Huh? <laughs> Left as soon as your men entered the room, General. Here, here's his sword. Well done, Mimi. <laughs> but this time our gallant friend is no more. What do you mean? I thought you said he was to be abducted. Oh, you're so naive, Mimi. Come, let's go to his room. Once I've seen his remains, and I'm certain he is dead, I can. <laughs> nice work, Dookie. I'm glad you got here. You're better than DDT. Boy, those guys were rough. Wonder what magazine they were selling. Yeah, what happened to those other two men? Where'd they go? Out to the balcony and down to the ground. Not gonna let them get away, are you? Certainly not. Back, cowards. Back, you swine. Stand your ground. Oh, he's great. I wonder how he'd make out with Sinatra. <laughs> your grace. Oh, come in, General. It's a bit cluttered. We'll need the larger vacuum cleaner. Swordsman. 
dead. Yeah, they're dead. There would have been more, but I had a dull blade, poor amateurs. Oh, that this would occur with you under my protection. Say no more, my good man. The book is closed. You you will return to the feast downstairs? Oh, but Natch. I'll summon help now to repair your suite. Never mind repairing her. Just send her in. Yeah, you, Mimi. Oh, oh, this is awful. I didn't know they meant to kill you, Homer. I give you my word. Your word. A sweet little cottage with a garden full of daisies and me under them. Oh, oh you must believe me. You must. Stop hugging and chalking me. Oh, but... You... you must listen. Your life is in danger. Danger. You speak to me of danger. I say poof to danger. Double poof. Oh. Very well, Homer. It's goodbye, then. They must have stabbed me. I hear air escaping. <laughs> oh, it's the Duke. Well, did you get those other two, Your Grace? Oh, they disappeared, confounded. How do you like that? Five guys trying to make a pincushion out of me. Get out of my clothes, Your Grace. I've had enough of this. Oh, but Your Highness... Don't Your Highness me, Your Highness. I want to be your loneliness again. Oh, but that... But that girl bouquet. You mean Mimi? Why, she's nothing... Talking of Mimi... I speak of the girl whose coach I drove. I must see her again. Not as the Duke, but as the humble lackey with whom she's fallen in love. Duke, someone's been spiking your hemo. <laughs> I just saw General Francisco. He told me that you... Calm oh. down, Darmon. Oh, your grace. Oh, thank heaven you've returned. Uh, but only for a moment. I'm on my way to Madrid. Madrid? I must see her once more. If only to say good No, 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 no. You can't change your clothes immediately. Darmon, you're not being very bright. Would you have your bridegroom killed? These men on the floor, they weren't after Bouquet, they were after me. That's why I'm getting out of these clothes. Oh, I never expected this of a clever fellow like you, Bouquet. What did I do? A man with a chance to outwit the sharpest minds in Spain. Me? How? Well, one of us is a duke and one of us is a barber, right? Right. But the Spaniards don't know which is which. If they kill me, what have they got? A dead duke. Exactly. But if we let them kill you instead... Nothing but a barber. I knew you'd see it. We stay the way we are. Good man. See you in Madrid. I hope. Okay. The Duke's a pretty sharp fellow to figure out a thing like this. Now all they can do to do is kill a crummy little barber. A barber. A barber. That's me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Long live the Duke. He should drop dead. <laughs> bring you Act Three of Monsieur Beaucaire, starring Bob Hope and Joan Caulfield in a moment. Men, we're offering you an opportunity to study the various operations and applications of the Mannheim slide rule. Well, perhaps this offer wouldn't appeal to the average clerk, journalist, or administrative specialist. But to the man engaged in technical or scientific work, it would mean something. If he were not already familiar with the Mannheim slide rule, he would be interested. He'd want to know how he could take advantage of the offer. He'd know that a working knowledge of the slide rule would be of considerable help to him in his job. He'd learn that the person to see is his education officer, who would tell him that the course and the application of the Mannheim type slide rule is offered by Yusafi. He'd fill out an application to enroll in the course and take the first step toward power through knowledge with Yusafi. Yes, he'd do that. If he were smart. Back now to your producer, William Keeley. Here's our third act starring Bob Hope as Monsieur Beaucaire and Joan Caulfield as Mimi. <laughs> Posing as the Duc de Chambre, Homer Beaucaire is now in the palace at Madrid, where tomorrow the real Duke is supposed to marry Princess Maria. But the real Duke, having fallen in love, has no intention of marrying any princess. Furthermore, the unpleasant General Francisco continues to plot the early death of the gallant de Chambre. And if this isn't enough, Homer's girlfriend, Mimi, appears to be very much on the side of Francisco. Besides, well, um, let's simplify matters and just say, Beaucaire's in one awful mess. Beaucaire, I can't find the Duc de Chandre anywhere. Oh, what makes a man forsake the honor of his country for a woman? 
willpower. No. No, it's time for his presentation to the king. Well, don't look at me. You? You don't think I present you to the king? Yes, I do. Well, we meet again, my friend. Oh, the sun, oh, praise heaven. Say, haven't you heard about doors? Every time I see you, you're coming in a window. Oh, but she's disappeared. My lady of the loach. She, I've scoured the whole of Madrid in her trace. Oh, forget her, sir. Forget your lady of the loach. Forget her. associate with anybody that sat in a loge, believe me. I don't care. I don't care whether she just, just sits in a loge or a coach. I don't care. <laughs> believe me, Dukey. Believe me, Dukey, she's grand. I, I tell you, just forget her. She, she's it's right here. She's just down. Um, forget her, Duke. Forget her. Because you were away washing your things, I know. <laughs> I lady of the loach. Duke, let me tell you something. Forget her. She's just another hank of hair, a smile, a piece of lace, a dimple. I tell you, sir, women are all alike. Sensational. Please, Your Grace, the King of Spain. Wait a moment. Beyond the balcony there. A garden over the wall. Come on, look. It is she. Oh, not again. My lady. Duke, Duke. No, no, not again. Don't worry, Garmon. I'll be back. Oh, it's no use, Book Hare. I, I can't keep the King waiting any longer. Go after the Duke. Bring him back at all costs. I'll go down and try to delay the proceedings. Yeah, you delay the proceedings. I'll see you in a month or so. I'll give you ten minutes. No, 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 after him. Go on. Climb down the balcony. Boy, I never thought I'd have a chance like this. Meet me later, Willie. I'm getting so far away from here, they'll have to use... <laughs> Darn that sword. <laughs> Don't know why I wear it that way. Now to find the Duke. Your Grace. Oh, hiya, General. Just thought I'd drop in for a minute. The Major Donna will announce the arrival of His Grace. Do you know where the powder room is, Jen? I'd like to take a powder. Uh, excuse me. I must go see the King. His Grace, the Duke is on. Book okay. here. I thought you were looking for the Duke. Yeah, well, so long. If you leave now, you'll be cut to bits. If I stay, bigger chunks. You have no choice. Huh? Now walk down the aisle to the king. The aisle? And be aloof. And be aloof? Look bored. Uh Uh-huh. Disdainful. Yes. Uh, A little more on the right nostril. How's this? Better. Better. Mm Mm-hmm. A little more. Uh Uh-huh. Not too much. You'll blow your hat off. Yeah. Here he comes, Your Majesty. That? That is what France has sent us, General? <laughs> yes, sire. Oh, for heaven's sake. What's the matter with his nose? Perhaps his mother was frightened by Bob Hope, sire. Yeah. <laughs> ah, my dear Deshaun, so this is the fabulous Duke. The man whose cold steel and warm heart have captivated the continent... The whole, right, Your Honor, sir. That's I said. As of the lady in the loach. That's right, Your Honor. <laughs> your, I your, mean, I mean, Your Majesty. Uh, thank you. Your prowess with the sword. Tell me, how do you do it? Oh, it's nothing on God, petty and thrust, and two dozen roses to the widow. <laughs> and uh, those stories of women waiting for your kisses in every corner of France. Uh, how do you do that? Oh, I got a fast horse. And now, Your Grace, in honor of France, the minuet. Thanks, but I'm not hungry. Uh, Countess. Sire. Your Grace, the Countess Velasquez will serve as your first partner. Do you object to the arrangement? Object? It's the nicest arrangement I've seen all day. And does Your Grace approve of what you've seen thus far in Spain? My Grace is beginning to, dear. It's strange that you, a Frenchman, do our Spanish dances so well. Oh, not at all. I take from Desi Arnaz. With such grace, your grace. You're like a feather. I always am next to such a pigeon. At the next measure, we start changing partners. I hope you'll find the other ladies to your liking. They're girls, aren't they? Oh, Elena, I dance for the next. Did you see that? The Duke just winked at me. 
a little harmless flirtation, and my Alfredo will have that ambassadorship. Alfredo? Well, what about my husband? And what about mine? We shall see. I dance with him now. Here I am, honey, or would you rather sit this one out? Uh, would you? No, I'm tired. Let's dance. Oh, I'd love to, Your Grace, because I must talk to you alone. But how about later? Well, why not? At 11, then, at your room. At my room? Of course. I may take out papers and settle down here permanently. Uh, what was that you said, Baroness? You must see me tonight? Oh, it is so vital to my happiness, Your Grace. Well, just let me check my schedule here. Marquise at 11, Countess at 11.20, the Duchess at 11.35. Well, suppose I squeeze you in at, say, midnight? Oh, how perfect. The witching hour. Yes, you can park your broom in the hall and come right in. Good evening, Your Grace. Mimi? Oh, Homer, I must speak to you alone. Sorry, you'll have to buy a raffle ticket like the rest. Homer, you're in danger. This is the kind of danger I like. Oh, whatever you do, don't touch the wine at the banquet tonight. Mm -hmm. General Francisco is going yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got any extra sen sen? Oh, oh, listen to me. Run along, girl. You're beginning to bore me. Oh, Your Grace, I simply must see you tonight. Sorry, honey. Book solid. Leave your name and I'll give you the first cancellation. Next. Who's next? Oh, what a racket. Oh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to the beloved sovereigns of our two great nations, Philip of Spain and Louis of France. What's the matter, Your Grace? Not toasting your king? I, uh, well, I don't think I'd better have any wine. I have to drive. Just make mine a short lime cola. Drink it or you insult our king. Oh, well. Hey, what's in this wine? I'd better stir it up a little. Yikes, the spoon dissolved. That wine comes to the king's own cellar. Well, maybe he's been playing with his chemistry set down there. This Mickey doesn't need fins. It's jet propelled. What's the matter, my boy? Is something wrong oh, here? Philip. Oh, I just remembered. I have a horse outside. I'm double parked. Well, it's been fun. Homer. Homer. Oh, Mimi, you were right. I've been a fool. Oh, and so have I, Homer. Mimi, we got to get out of here. Oh, we'll never make it together. You go on alone. And leave you? Never. Oh, but you must. I said never. But they'll cut you to pieces. I'll send for you. Oh, Mimi, I know I'm not good enough for you, just a coward with seven up in my blood, but when I'm near you, it starts to boil and bubble, and every bubble starts to bubble, and every bubble's bubble bubbles. I feel like a lovesick pressure cooker. <laughs> Honest, Mimi, I'm fizzing all over with love for you. I know it, darling. I fizz a little myself. There he is. Call us, Pedro. Quickly, Homer, run for your life. <laughs> I've come to report, General. Well? The Duke has been returned quite unharmed to his rooms. Good. We must still find a way to dispose of him tonight. Oh, one other matter, sir. Our men have just captured a stranger, found not ten minutes ago in the garden with Princess Maria. What? Who is he? He refuses to say. Dressed like a lackey, he is all the manners of a French nobleman. French nobleman, eh? Carlos, take me to this stranger at once. <laughs> your feet, Frenchman. So, you dare visit the garden of our Princess Maria. Princess Maria? What did you say? How dare you molest her? Princess? You mean that girl? You mean she is the Princess of Spain? <laughs> I assure you, His Majesty won't consider this a laughing matter. Take me to the king at once. Why? Because I am the Duke de Chandre. This ring on my finger will identify me. And, and who is that idiot masquerading as you? <laughs> Why, that's my barber. And to think I almost let him marry my princess. <laughs> Come, sir, take me out of here. No, oh, no, think. I don't think so, my friend. Your barber shall marry the Princess Maria. Now, look, this has gone far enough. Oh, our poor king will be vastly upset. It may even lead to war. I demand you let me out of here. Certainly, Your Grace, certainly. Right after the wedding. <laughs> What's going on, Darman? What are those bells? They told the hour of marriage. Oh, I thought the phone strike was over. <laughs> I can't believe... I guess they're just you local bells, huh? <laughs> he fails to appear, then honor is dead. Virtue is dead. Gallantry is dead. And with us, that makes a fivesome. <laughs> oh, thank heavens. Maybe it's he now. Yeah, maybe it's him. It ain't he, it's him. What's this, your grace? Not ready yet for your wedding. Oh, well, I... There's been a slight delay, General Francisco. You mean uh, the peculiar incident last night? Oh, no, no. We just... Uh, what incident? Just some scoundrel shouted to high heaven that he was a Duc de Chandra. Yeah? Yeah, well, 
Well, what did you do with him? Mm, what do you suppose we do with a lackey impersonating royalty? I asked you first. <laughs> Stand him up against the wall. My men raise their rifles. And bing. Bing. What a revolting thought. <laughs> well, how about getting dressed for your wedding? Oh, it's going to be formal, huh? You have very little time. Where is he, General? The bridegroom. In his room there. Why have you come here, Carlos, and with Mimi? To tell you that King Louis of France has suddenly arrived for the wedding. Louis! Ha, oh, oh, what a stroke of luck. You men know what to do? The moment the barber marries Maria, we produce the real Duke de Chandra. Excellent. What do you mean, the real Duke? Uh, Mimi, Isn't... my dear, uh, we happen to have the real Duke de Chandra locked in a dungeon. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Now, downstairs, both of you. <laughs> Are you ready, Maria? The wedding guests are all assembled. As ready as I'll ever be, Father. The Duke has just entered, and King Louis of France has joined us unexpectedly. Father? Father, who's that mincing idiot over there? Why, you're, you're betrothed, my dear. The Duke de Chand. Oh, Father, don't you think that's carrying patriotism a little too far? Well, I guess you've got a point at that, but it's too late to worry about it now. You're on, Maria. <laughs> King Louis, please, I can't marry the princess. Didn't you recognize me before? Of course I recognized you, but I couldn't let anyone know it. What's happened? Where's Deshaun? Oh, never mind. We can't do anything now. You've got to marry her. It's our next. But I love Mimi. Shut up. Mimi? Who's Mimi? You remember Mimi, Pompadour? Oh, yes, of course, Mimi. Uh, quiet. Here's that general again. Uh, tell me, Your Majesty... Is Beaucaire really a good barber? Good? Best barber I ever had. Beaucaire, I haven't had a good shave since you... Oh, no, no. What have I said? Exactly what I hoped you'd say, sire. Thank you for confirming my information. Well, the Princess Maria makes her appearance. Uh, shall we proceed? No, we won't. I got a mind of my own, and I say... Well, if you put it that way... That's better. The Princess Maria, your grace. Come, gentlemen, let them have the next moment alone. Princess Maria. Well... You, you're the girl that, the, the coach, the duke. What are you doing here? I believe I'm to be your bride. You are? Oh, that's too bad. Until death do us part. Yeah, they're working on that. <laughs> well, the chief justice has just entered. Well, I suggest you take me to the altar. And let's get this over with as quickly as possible. Princess Maria, your grace, join hands, please. We are assembled on this solemn occasion. General Francisco. General. What is it? He's escaped. The Duke de Chandra has escaped. You're sure? Positive. That girl Mimi got the keys and... We must act at once. Uh, wait. Hold. Stop the wedding. Stop. General. What outrage is this? Sire. I accuse this Louis of France of deliberately trying to palm off on the princes of Spain. Not a prince of the blood. Not the Duke de Chandra. But Monsieur Beaucaire, a common barber. A buck of shave, and he calls me common. Preposterous. The man lies. Yeah, you bet he does. Just for that, I'm not going to marry anybody. Oh, nothing personal, honey. Come on, King Louis, let's go. I repeat, this man is a common barber. And with my glove, I challenge him to a duel. Do you accept this challenge? Make it hot towels at 50 paces, and I'll be interested. Slap him back. Go on, slap me. Like this. You're sure lucky I haven't got a sword. Perhaps you will accept mine, monsieur. You keep out of this. General Francisco, I don't believe a word you've said. For months I've been aware of your plots against me in the peace of our country. Yeah. And at last you have gone too far. Deschamps, you'll be doing Spain a great service. You'll put an end to this scoundrel with a Spanish sword. Here, I give you my own. You, uh, you, you're sure you want me to do this? After all, it's going to be awfully one-sided. He deserves to die. On guard, Perry, fast, and it's two dozen roses to the widow. Yeah, but the choice long stem ones, they're out of season. Let's wait till spring, huh? Agar! Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, oh, uh, hey, wait, uh, wait, cut that out. What's Agar! Foul! What? Agar! 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 Deshaun! Get him, Deshaun! After him! A pleasure, sire! Oh, oh, it's about time you got here, Your Grace. Well, now that I've worn him down, he's all yours. Wait a minute, Louis. Whom did you just call Deshaun? Why, the real Duke, of course. The man I sent to marry your daughter. That's it, Deshaun. Teach him a lesson, my boy. Show him our good friends. Hiya, honey. Don't stand there. Come on, we got to get out of here. Darling, you're leaving the palace a coward. Why not? That's the way I came in. Are you all right? Are you hurt? I don't know. We'll take inventory later. 
Oh, don't worry, Homer. I, I have a carriage waiting outside. Yeah, but where'll we go? Oh, I don't know. We can't stay here, and we can't go back to France. And... Now, don't worry. We'll find a place. There must be some country where you can die of old age. And so the real Duke de Chandra vanquished the wicked general and married his own true love, Princess Maria. General Francisco was banished, and there was peace between France and Spain. But what's happened to our hero, Beaucaire and Mimi? Well, let's cross the Atlantic. The year 1776, the place Philadelphia, where in a side street a sign reads, Homer Beaucaire, barber. Ye only four-chair shoppy in ye colonies. Who's next, please? Oh, I guess you are, Mr. Washington. Good morning, Beaucaire. Morning, sir. The usual? If you please. Uh, I can't tell you what it means, Beaucaire. A four-chair shop right here in Philadelphia. Uh, tell me, how did you happen to come to America anyway? Well, I had to, General. I'm thinking of buying some stock in the Indians. Say, you're, you're all dressed up today, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir, you're all dressed up. Something special going on? Oh, Jefferson and the boys have cooked up some sort of a declaration of independence or something. Oh, one of those. And I ought to drop over and sign it. Mm -hmm. Chance to use my new quill. New quill? Yes, here, take a look. Uh, ben Franklin invented it. Claims it writes underwater. <laughs> mm, let me see that. Mm. Mm, the 76 special. Yeah. Parker's sure going to be sore. All he's got's a 51. <laughs> <laughs> I've been helping Martha with the fudge. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, you must... That's uh, my line, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, it comes to that point. Uh, <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, you might have Mrs. Beaucaire <laughs> manicure my nails, please. Been helping Martha with a fudge, eh, Mimi? <laughs> he changes wigs fast, doesn't he? <laughs> Playing all the parts. Uh, Mimi, oh, yes, there you are. Good morning, darling. Uh, oh. <laughs> there. There you are, Homer. Thanks, honey. But look who's under the lather. Mr. Washington. Well, how are you today? Splendid today, thank you. Uh, manicure? If you please. My, you have been neglecting them, haven't you? You can throw the fudge line in there again if you want to. <laughs> you know, Washington was quite an ad libber, you know. Okay, I, I've been thinking, you know. All this, this could happen only in America. There. But what's that? Oh, that that's something that could happen anywhere. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And say thanks, Bill, for teaming me with my favorite brunette, Joan. Uh, where are your eyes, Bob? I'm a blonde. Yeah, but my favorite brunette, that's the title of my Paramount picture. <laughs> Pretty sneaky, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, Bob, you know those 14 favorite brunettes you brought to Hollywood to uh, plug the picture? Please, Bill, not plug. I hate the word. Well, we might as well be honest. Yeah, but plug always makes me think of Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, why didn't you go down and meet them, Bob? Oh, I was, but you know, Bill, people like myself hate to get mauled. People like yourself? Yeah, but as for me personally, the mauled, the merrier. You know, they say there are seven women to every man in the United States, Bob. How do you rate 14 of them? I don't ask questions. I just have fun. <laughs> Come on, go. <laughs> Good night. And thanks, Bob and Jim. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood.
American Forces Radio and Television Service.